forget the memory. Just overcome the emotion because it's the emotion that keeps you anchored to the past. So that sounds really good theoretically, but when you step out into that unknown, into that void, the body really is in a habit. And what a habit is when the body becomes the mind. Or if you're thinking about that past event and it's producing an emotion, well, you need an image and a feeling to start the conditioning process. So the body's either conditioned into the familiar past or it's hardwired in the predictable future because it wakes up every single day and runs through the same series of routine actions. So the present moment then becomes the unknown. When people start feeling that discomfort, Jay, they'd rather get on their cell phone and call someone or get up and say, I can't meditate or, you know, I, I have too much to do. They excuse themselves. They return back into that familiar feeling because the body's actually telling the brain. The habit is when the body becomes the mind. So the body's stepping out into the unknown and says, ooh, I'd rather feel guilty. I'd rather feel unhappy than be in this discomfort. So then at least then when they return back to that familiar feeling, then they feel safe. So they step out in the unknown and the body starts influencing the mind, saying, you can start tomorrow, you're too busy, it's your mother's fault, you know, it's your culture's fault, and I don't have enough money, this isn't going to work. Those are the programs in there that are standing in the way between you and your future. So then nerve cells that no longer fire together, no longer wire together. So the act of observing those states of mind and body means you're no longer the program. You're the consciousness observing that program. So, so as you become familiar with those thoughts, you become conscious of how you speak, you become aware of how you act, you notice how you're feeling. The more conscious you become of those unconscious programs, the less unconscious you'll go in your waking day. Why? Because it's not enough to just have a great meditation and get up and get on the freeway and get in traffic and get in stress. You just return back to the old self again. Our job then is to sustain that modified state of mind and body the entire day. And if you can, get ready because something different or unusual it's going to begin to happen in your life and it will come as a coincidence or a synchronicity. And that's breadcrumbs from the divine saying you're on the path. Just keep doing it. You're, there'll be another one. Just keep staying in that energy in your life. If you start returning back to the same reactions to the same people and circumstances, you're returning back to the old self. So you got to stay conscious in your life. And, and if you're not being defined by a vision of the future, then you're left with the memories of the past and you will be predictable in your life. So crossing that river of change from the old self to the new self, there's a neurological, a biological, a chemical, a hormonal, a genetic death of the old self. But if you teach people there's something on the other side, they won't give up on themselves. They'll keep going. So there's enough evidence to encourage people. And you can't tell me you're too old to do this work. You can't tell me you're too sick to do this work. You can't tell me you had a turbulent past or, or that you're too overweight or too underweight or too out of shape. Or You can't even tell me that you've never meditated before. In fact, some of our greatest scans are people who just have never meditated before that are not trying to do anything. They just follow instructions. So our community now is beginning to understand that it is possible and they go all in, not 50% in, not 60% in. We do a week long event we got a thousand people or 1500 people and they are all in and that when they start getting beyond themselves that first day or second day once they start getting beyond themselves and that magic starts to happen then i have no idea i can't predict what's going to happen next and it's usually pretty pretty exciting and so the fundamental question is can you believe in a future that you can't see or experience with your senses yet but you've thought about enough times in your mind that your brain is literally changed to look like the event has already occurred. Now, the latest research in plasticity says that's absolutely possible. And can you select a new possibility in the quantum field and begin to emotionally embrace that future every single day to such a degree that your body, as the unconscious mind, the objective mind does not know the difference between the experience in your life that's creating the emotion and the emotion that you're fabricating by thought alone to the degree that you begin to signal new genes and new ways to change your body to look like the experience has already happened. Now, yes. the latest research in epigenetics says it's absolutely possible. Now, think about this. Every day, 
installing the circuitry, every day conditioning the body into the emotion of the future, that your body begins to change to look like it's already happened. Now, this is where it gets fun because now you no longer have to go anywhere to get it. Now it begins to come to you. You become the vortex or the magnet to your destiny. So then people who come out of their meditation and they say, well, I just focused on my wealth. Why isn't it there? Well, you're not that good. If you're asking why isn't it there, you're back to the old person again. Stay in that state for an extended period of time as an experiment, as the scientist in your life to keep your energy connected to the to the dream of your future and then see what kind of effects begin to take place without moving into impatience, mm. without moving into frustration, without starting to analyze why it hasn't happened or when that is the trap of defining reality with your senses. So you have the thought of your future and you don't see it, then you experience separation. But people who are practicing this work, they have the thought of their future and they feel the emotion of their future. They're still connected to it, right? So that takes practice. And it's just learning, like hitting a golf ball, hitting a tennis ball, dancing the salsa, you know, crocheting, whatever it is. You gotta, you gotta start out staying real conscious and learning. Then you get good at it and it gets to be instrumental. It gets to be fun. And that's, that's what I want for everybody, that the, the act of creation Mm. should be a blissful, Playful. ecstatic, loose, uh, free process. Mm. And, um, and so I love the idea of people taking time out of their lives uh, to prove to themselves that if they're defined by the vision of the future, then they're not living by the memories of the past. And that's where the unknown exists. So many people, the unknown is a scary place. So they don't see that future because they're used to seeing that future with evidence, with their senses. And the, you have to be able to get beyond that and stay in the unknown, stay in that discomfort. And then in that moment, to be, begin to self-regulate. Like, oh, I'm starting to feel a little anxiety. Ooh, I'm starting to feel a little frustration. That's the defining moment where your body's going back to the past, because emotions are a record of the past. Or you go into routine again. So you catch yourself. It's a victory. And if you keep catching yourself, those victories add up. And it's not so much about your wealth or your health or your freedom or your new relationship. It's actually about who you become. And so overcoming the old self allows us to become somebody else. And there is that period of transition. Yeah. I call it the void where there's just not a lot happening. And you just got to be able yeah. to keep going and continuously get to the end of your belief where most people stop. I just had a fabulous conversation with someone uh, this weekend, broke through to the other side. And now there's so much magic happening around this person, but she's worthy now to receive it. And that's that. That is the key because the universe only gives us what we think we're worthy of receiving. So we got to come initiated into this and understand it.